So you can browse through a site like this, but what's m more interesting are the actual models files themselves. So again, I'm not looking at this from the first time. I've actually edited these files before. Um, but that being said, I don't make these files and there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, in, in, in general, these are text files and I'm using Notepad++ because it's a text editor that, that has a, a very good feature of, of by default kind of flagging different, um, I don't know what to call those in object oriented programming. It's whatever your, your definitions might be, but also the different syntax. Um, so for example, all the different things that are being defined, um, like your species IDs, your names, your compartments, charges, and boundary conditions are all showing up in red, making them very easy to identify. And then you've got, uh, in this case, in your list of species, you have a species name, um, and uh, I mean, you have an ID, then a full name, um, then a compartment, a charge, and a boundary condition. So I, I kind of jumped into species first, uh, and I'm not sure how much time you want to spend on this as a, as a class versus maybe on your own, um, but I, I'll start from the top and, and briefly like go over some things here. So the first thing you find is that there's, um, there's a SBML level, which is sort of the language that's being used. It, I believe it's synthetic biology markup language. So there is some kind of uh, uniform standard that synthetic biologists have, have come to uh, want to deal with all these models. In. And then you have your overall model. The one I picked is E. coli IAF uh, 1260. So it has about 1260 genes or reactions. Um, and it was made by somebody whose name I forget um, uh, with the initials AF. Um, you've got all your fluxes uh, defined in this unit millimole per gram dry weight per hour. Um, then you've got um, different units like moles, grams, um, seconds, and, and uh, it's interesting actually that it lists seconds here and hours there, but maybe that multiplier has something to do with that. Um, so you've got your compartments, extra organism, um, which is interesting. Um, that should just be outside, yes, okay. And then paraplasm, and here it has um, some kind of a definition that's basically creating the, the relationship between the different compartments, that this is outside of the organism and it's directly outside of the paraplasm. Whereas if you're in the cytosol, what's outside is the paraplasm. So then all these species are listed. I'm not gonna go through all of them. There are way too many to do that. Um, we can pick some of our favorites, although they might be hard to identify because um, everything is sort of given these nicknames. But, you know, here's something like 3-phosphoglycerate, um, and it's in the cytosol. It has a charge. Um, this charge, I think, is more related to um, the, the idea of um, a degree of reductance. Um, maybe, actually, now that I think about it, that might be a real charge. Um, Yes, I think that's actually a real charge. We have to look at some comp some other compounds to know. Um, but it's there for electron balancing. Um, so when we get to reactions, which, okay, so we finished the list of species, then you get to reactions. Um, and again, this model is trying to be really comprehensive. So we're talking about things like diacyl glycerol transport, which is not something that, you know, we're really interested in. Um, but let's see if we can find, I mean, I can always do control F. Let's do glucose. Okay, uh, let's pick a different glucose. Um, so this is interesting. There are these exchange reactions, which may just have to do with where, uh, like what compartment the reactions are in. Um, so this is G6P and it's going from E to B, uh, it seems. And I think that is just a matter of moving it around. Although I don't see, I could imagine E being extracellular. I'm not sure what the B would be for here. Um, so here's a simple reaction of glucose 1 phosphatase um, where 
there's, it seems, some kind of water addition and phosphate hydrolysis. And so I'm not going to, I'm not going to spend too much more time on this, but there, but these models are elaborate. I mean, there's like, you know, they keep getting updated every couple of years. And what's really neat is that their software that you could download even, uh, I thought about making it as a homework assignment, but it would be a, a fairly complicated one. Um, you could use, there's a package for MATLAB and there's a package for Python. Um, Cobra Pi is the last one I used. And it's a tool that uh, has a, a couple of issues, but at least when I used it in 2014, but otherwise it's really neat. And I would encourage you, uh, maybe if you think it's relevant for your group project, um, to try to mess around with it. Um, I wouldn't get lost in it necessarily. I mean, again, something to keep in mind here is that um, these sort of tools are really great for understanding the metabolism that's already there. And your, the, the part of the class that I like to emphasize, uh, given my background, and built into the group project is that you're trying to really make something new to design a, a pathway to a new product. So what you would need to do is you need to add the, your new reactions into this list. They'd have to be defined as species. You'd have to have their, their reactions listed out. And I've actually done that manually. It's not the hardest thing. Um, but Cobra Pi actually has a user, a GUI based or Python based like command interface where you can then uh, basically type in, you know, add reactions. I, that's not the exact syntax. And then you can just tell it what reactions you're adding and then it will update the model file. Uh, you just have to save the updated model file. And so there's, there's things like that um, that make the process a little bit more automated. Um, any questions about that? Okay, I'm going to go back to slides then. <laughs>